Okay, I have completed uh, with new material. Second time I've completed it actually. So, second set of gunnels. So this this is going to be the uh, inner gunnel, and what I've done is I've shaped it a one inch square. They're about 16 feet long. I'm going to be shortening them, and then I put a 45 degree bevel on the back side. So this this area here um, to put to orient it will go this way in the canoe on the interior. So on the right right wall, if you would, facing forward, and that corresponding, uh, or that 45, I should say, the, the ribs are going to get a 45 cut on them. When they're driven in, it's, it's completely a, a friction fit when it's done. Anyway, somebody said to me, well, you damn fool, you go to the woods, you split out the logs, you spend, uh, I've got nine hours of labor, not counting splitting and getting the logs back to the site but nine hours of work to get to this point. Someone says, you don't fool, why don't you go to a lumber yard and get them to saw it? Well, what happens there, um, well, it's twofold. So first and foremost, it's, uh, I'm trying to do this traditionally uh, and respect the culture and the, and the brilliance of the people that invented this craft. Um, they gifted us so many things that we use today that are almost unchanged, the toboggan, the snowshoe. But the epitome, in my opinion, is the birch bark canoe. How they conceived of it and how they constructed it is absolutely amazing. And there's millions of people in the world that, that have canoeing as a hobby, and we have the indigenous people to thank for that. So that's the first reason. This, but the, the other reason is on a sawmill, uh, you get nice straight boards. They're a little square in this, but... Um, it has no conscience, so as it's, it gives you this straight board, but it's cutting through the, through the growth rings. So when you go to bend these on the frame, uh, they simply snap. So you, you can't start with sawn wood. You have to do it with a mogatagan or a draw knife. Uh, and the best tool in the toolbox is patience. Anyway, um, pretty exciting because I'm going to start to lay this out today. And very shortly, it's going to start to sh have a shape of a canoe. Anyway, I'm going to go over to my table and lay it out. So again, in keeping with traditional ways, I'm using measuring sticks to, um, or rope um, to, to measure the different components of the canoe. So what I'm doing now is just laying out a center line. I'm building a 13 and a half foot canoe. So um, basically my building frame is going to be 13 feet long. I'm going to leave three or four inches at either end for the, the, for the stem piece. So uh, what I want now is just a center line roughly there
So in constructing my canoes in the past, what, what I typically do is um, sort of block the, the gunnels at the right height as they go along and doing that individually. But uh, I saw uh, a, a, another birch bark canoe builder who used a technique of building his frames, getting his, his bend in the front, and then strapping the, so I've got the inner gunnel, I've got the outer gunnel, and so once he gets it in place, and we're going to use boiling water to steam these and I'll be tapering these ends down so they're roughly an inch but they're going to taper down to about a half an inch at the ends so I'll get that taper in and then I'm going to actually tie this to the inner gunnel and let it cure on the table so basically I'm going to pluck out the inner and outer gunnels as one piece take the outer gunnels off then I can start my sewing so a different approach this time we'll see how it goes Got a whole bunch of things going on today. So number one is you'll notice that my canoe building shed has been moved. So <laughs> I think after the sixth time it fell down, uh, I got smart. So I attached it to the to the cabin temporarily and, and took some of the scab pieces that were left over from splitting out gunnels and made some pretty crude roof rafters. But anyway, hopefully, hopefully this time it doesn't go down. We had a lot of rain last night and it was still standing this morning, so which surprised me. Anyway, I've got the uh, the gunnels done, inner and outer gunnels done, and today I've I've done all my notching, uh, my jointery, if you would, mortise and tenons in in the five thwart, so center thwart and two each side of center, and uh, I'm about to uh, I've make it look like a canoe, at least a canoe shape, a long way from it floating, but uh, it's going to be sort of neat. I'm hoping if my mass right, it's going to give me the the shape and design that I sort of desire. Anyway, we're going to see in a few minutes.
Okay, last one, and uh, that is the general shape that my new canoe is going to be. So um, I've decided I was going to build a long nose Ojibwe, and then that I already got one of them. So, so I'm building a, a, an Algonquin canoe, and I'm actually doing it from Adney's plans. So uh, it's it's not it's going to be a reproduction. So the next step I have to do is I, I've got to split these guys down. I've got to trim them down a little smaller. Then I got to split them because I'm going to put one heck of a bend in this for the bow and stern. And when I get that done, then I'm going to take the uh, outer gunnels and I'm going to steam them as well or pour boiling water on them and get them to follow the same shape. And I'll tie them to these guys. Then I'm going to let the whole thing sit for three or four or five days. I'm going to let it dry out because I'm off to find bark again. <laughs> because I'm not going to all this work and putting sort of questionable uh, material on the outside of this thing. So we're. Uh, we're off to the bush again. I'm going to pack my trekking gear this time because it may take me a few days. I'm not coming home without good stuff. I've got the um, I've got the outer gunnels tied to my inner gunnels, and I fitted my front here. It's pretty close now. Um, It'll take some final work when I get down to putting the stem piece in. It'll get thinned out a little bit in, in the inside here. And I've got some water boiling. So what I have to do at this point is I have to steam these guys to get them bent around so they project out a little bit because they're going to go way up on the stem of the canoe. And I've used waxed Irish linen to, to tie the outer gunnels to the inner gunnels. And what I'm working on right now is the shear line. So if you think about the bottom of the canoe, it's, it's called the rocker, or if it's perfectly flat, it's a flat bottom canoe. So the more it, it curves to the front uh, bow and stern, that's called rocker. So this, this canoe is gonna have quite a bit. It's uh, gonna be a 13 and a half foot solo hunter canoe. So I want lots of rocker in it. It's much more maneuverable in white water. And uh, yeah, back to the shear lines. I, for, I forgot to mention the, the wax linen that I'm using um, to tie this thing, it, it's only temporary. <laughs> Obviously, it, it doesn't have a lot of strength, so it'll all be cut out when we get uh, down to using the root to stitch the bark to the gunnels. So I mentioned the bottom of the canoe, the shape is called the rocker, and th what I'm working on now is the shear line. So the shear line, if you think of it, if your canoe is sitting upright uh, on the water, the shear line is the shape or the profile from bow to stern of the side lines. And this one's gonna have quite a bit. That's the way the Algonquin built theirs, especially their smaller hunter canoes. So uh, I've got the center thwart done, which is sits right on the platform. I've added one inch here, which is starting to bring my, my shear line up. I've added four inches here. Using my measuring sticks, I'm gonna carbon copy that at the far end. So I've started there. The one part I haven't finished yet, that's where the boiling water comes in, is I've got to steam these guys in order to get that final bend in, in the end pieces. So back to the other end. <laughs> 